have a wonderful, wonderful show for everyone today because it is a uh, is a longtime correspondent of Computer America, and that's Dick DiBartolo, Mad Magazine's Mattis writer, and the Gizwiz on ABC's World News Now. And yes, he's joining us once again to talk about all these different kind of uh, gadgets and devices. You know, uh, first one's going to be a webcam, and then we have things like uh, helmets and bikes and so on and so forth. It's going to be a lot of fun, always is. So stay tuned for more of that. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. So everyone, hopefully you are having a great day and we can make it a little bit better. So here we go. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three. I am your host, Ben Crossman. As we move into another great episode, I want to, uh, before we bring Dick on and, uh, you know, longtime listeners of the show are very, very familiar with him. uh, Before we move into that, I want everyone to... Uh, you know, I want to bring to your attention that computeramerica.com is going to have a lot of great resources for today's show and it's going to have uh, great resources for past shows because we just had a wonderful show with Arctic's Entertainment just yesterday getting a lot of traffic on that. Who knew on Gamer Tuesday if you have a gaming company on or a game development studio on, uh, people would be interested. It's crazy, insane, I know. But it was a lot of fun. It was a great interview, as well as in the second part of that, we also had uh, a 3D printing company, um, uh, Mark Forge. There we go, Mark Forge. And we talked all about 3D printing and and uh, you know more towards the business side of it, but it was still a lot of fun. Check that out at computeramerica.com where we have archived for all the show, uh, for all the shows for 10 days, and then we move them over into the archive section and yeah, you can find them there for the end uh, till the end of time. Now, with that being said, um, you know I want uh, to also drive everyone to our social media, support Computer America on social media, and you are eligible to win a prize from our friends over at Logitech. Uh, this week, we're giving away uh, keys to go from Logitech. It's a great small, thin keyboard, very, very resilient, great for traveling, great for tablets and notebooks. Um, well, no, tablets and and uh, phones because it's Bluetooth and a uh, full full fledged keyboard. And of course, with that being said, also on computeramerica.com, you will find the show notes. And in the show notes, you'll find a link. Uh, you know, normally we have links to all the articles and things that we talk about, but our guest is so kind as to kind of curate these things for us uh, over on his site. So over in our show notes, we have a link to uh, to gizwiz.biz, where over on the right you'll have a section there over uh, i'm sorry over on the right there's a banner that says non-pay lackey fun on computer america and yeah click that and it will be everything that we're talking about today and dick does a great job of you know pictures summaries as well as links to places where you can buy these things and links to the websites where you can find out more about them so highly recommend you go do that and with that being said, I don't want to uh, beat around the bush too much because I know la- uh, last month w- when we had him on, we made it like halfway through, you know, all the different gadgets that he had. So, uh, yeah, we have a lot to talk about. And so I'm just going to bring him on. Welcome onto the show. Again, it's Dick DiBartolo. He is Mad Magazine's maddest writer and host of The Gizwiz on Twit and also The Gizwiz on ABC's World News Now. And joining us once again on Computer America, Dick, welcome on. Thanks for uh, being here. Uh, you're welcome. I'll just correct one thing. Uh, on Twit, I'm on uh, the uh, Tech Guy Lab show with Leo, Leo Laporte, wow. and the Gizwiz is independent, and it's at gizwiz.tv. So it's it's gizwiz.biz for gadgets, and it's gizwiz.tv for our shows. Well, I would love to take credit for messing that up, but I just stole that from your website. So you did. I did indeed. It says about me. It's a picture of you. And right underneath that, I just plagiarized everything I just said about you. Oh <laughs> okay. Well, I'll have to change that. Definitely. Definitely. But oh, no. okay. Yeah. But no. Uh, yeah. So, so everything Dick just said, but yeah, it's still a pleasure to have him on. He's a longtime Computer America correspondent. And yeah, you know, you always find great things to, uh, you know, talk about and new gadgets and, you know, you usually go out to conventions and things like, you know, I I don't know if it's just New York city where there's tons and tons of stuff going on, but you seem to, you know, be so, so busy with, you know, all these different gadgets. 
Well, the, the hardware show is a great show to go to. I find a lot of stuff there because the hardware show is actually five shows in one. It's hardware show. It's the outdoor garden show. It's the uh, uh, car gadget show, the, the, the uh, a tailgating show out in the, out in the parking lot. And, and this year I went to a show called Interbike and, and the people there, I went there like, a long time ago, like 10 years or 15 years ago, maybe. And I found just about nothing. And every year they call me, come out, come out. Come out. I, I said, you know, no. <laughs> so this time the guy said, I'll send you a ticket. If you find nothing, go home. You haven't lost anything. I said, all right, I'll go. <laughs> so I went and it, I guess they're a new PR company. They, it was huge, just amazing. Uh, so we'll talk about a lot of neat bike gadgets. And in the meantime, a friend of mine over at Logitech said, Dick, do you know we have a new uh, webcam out? Out of the blue, I sent her an email and said, how come Logitech seems not to have refreshed the line in like four or five years? And yeah. she said, oh, she said, what do you have, ESP? <laughs> Two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we introduced a new camera. And, and if you have to be watching the video part of this, I'm actually on it. it it's, it's a refresh of the C920. And I think that's been out for at least four years. So the new one is the C922. And it's interesting what changed about it is that so many people now are streaming video yeah and so the uh it, it is 1020p at 30 frames a second but if you want to stream gaming for example you can switch it over to 720p at 60 frames a second so this is going to be uh an ideal camera for people who like to stream video to know about and it has uh, another interesting perk that kind of kind of works it works if you work with it it, it has like a, a software solution to a green screen and basically you 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 load this software so you get two sets of software with it one is to run the camera and the other is this uh software to actually pretend that you're uh in, sitting in front of a green screen and it takes out your background Mm -hmm. and then can super you over the game or whatever you're doing so i tried it as did several uh reporters that i know tried and if the background is busy it has a lot of trouble finding out exactly what is you in which case you may not have ears you know if you were especially if you wear headphones it thinks the headphones are the background and it'll show your face with no ears i've um, done with that yeah it it, it I, I mean like you set like the, the tolerance like uh where it kind of thinks you are and like you know the, the tighter you set the tolerance the better you look and the and like lower tolerance the more fuzzy you look but yes yes and and the clearer your background is the easier it is for the software to say oh the, i see they were that guy that yeah. guy there yeah so i'm dead in my studio i have so much crap in the background <laughs> uh but it did it found <laughs> found 90 percent of me um but it's free so you don't have to worry right. um, and the other thing is something to be aware of uh, the link i put on my website is for the x version now it's being marketed as the c922 and the c922x the camera in the box is exactly the same the other stuff in the box is slightly different if you get the 922 a small tripod comes in the box. Uh, it's a little metal tripod. It's not, you know, professional or anything. As a matter of fact, I think it's on on uh, Amazon for about eight dollars if you bought it by itself. Right. But it comes that version without the X comes with three months of X Split Pro for free, which is um, I I just started learning uh, X. X that that's what i use yeah oh okay there you go okay and it's what it's like five dollars a month isn't it something yeah like um i i mean it's uh 15 for a three-month license minimum but yeah no yeah, yeah there you go okay so, okay but the link i put on my website is for the 922x which comes without the tripod but you get six months 
of the XSplit Pro software. So unless you need, you're crazy about having that little tripod thing, I would go for the 922X and get the six months of XSplit software, which is could be like a $30 uh, value. Mm -hmm. But the uh, camera, the camera in, the, in, in, the, in the box is both exactly the same. Perfect. Yeah. And, it, and I'm just looking on your thing here. It says uh, XSplit broadcaster and gamecaster. Uh, there's a difference, but, you know, one's for like if you stream video games and the other is, you know, like what, uh, you know, what Dick does or what I do, uh, I use broadcaster and it's, you know, a great, great piece of software. Um, pretty, pretty synonymous with OBS with it, which is open broadcasting software, yes. but much easier to use. So I definitely like it. Yes, that's why I, someone said, why did you pay for XSplit? I said, because everything I read said that it's easier to use than, than uh, OBS. Definitely. Yeah. So anyway, so those uh, that camera's out now. It's the Logitech C92 uh, Pro Streaming, Pro Stream Webcam. Yeah. And, and, and like I said to you before, you know, we actually started the show, your, you know, your video much, much more clear, uh, much, much more light, you know, more lighting. Yes. That's, that's the other great thing. This camera has uh, very good low light capability and it has dual mics, but if you, you can get away, it's certainly the dual mics are going to be better than the mic in your computer. But if you want to do any sort of professional broadcasting, uh, a standalone mic would be the way to go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah. Good. And yeah. Definitely very good. Definitely check that out. Um, oh, what, one other thing. They, they, uh, the new stand on the C922 also has a tripod socket at the bottom. So if okay. you have a professional tripod, you know, you don't have to use the little one that comes in the box. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, just with the Logitech line, I mean, I've tried their webcams up from like their $20 ones uh, all the way up to like their $100 ones. And what a huge difference it makes from the, from the bottom of the line to the top of the line. So definitely check that out. Yep. Um, good, good to hear that they refreshed the line. So with that being said, in Vegas, um, you know, not, not just see us there, not just the adult show out there, but a lot of other things going on out there. And Interbike was just, uh, I, I want to say last month um, that, that just happened. And yeah, so useful bike gadgets from Interbike, which is, again, a huge show in Las Vegas, all about, you guessed it, bicycles and you know gadgets around bicycles and you know things like that so what is this and why does this kid have viking horns on his helmet well this is kind of this is a very funny idea the the, the guy who who does them has a, a wonderful sense of humor the the product he came out with is called crazy heads and crazy heads are ways to decorate they're like spandex i'm not exactly sure they're all spandex covers that snap on over a bike helmet for all those kids who say i'm not gonna wear a bike helmet i don't want to look like a nerd these are funny things that clip on to a bike helmet well so you still have all the safety of a bike helmet but you can be a viking or you can be a pirate uh, they, they make them for young kids. You can be a jester. It, it's a very clever way to have fun and still be having the safety of a bike helmet. And they sell from $25 to $37. And he has oh at, at least two dozen different ways to decorate your bike helmet. Yeah. And, and, and like you said, it doesn't compromise it at all. But, um, you know, hey, kids love to personalize and you definitely... Uh, turn some heads wearing some of these uh some of these helmet covers so exactly. very very cool um hey christmas idea I, I i mean i know here on computer america the whole of next month is going to be uh gift giving ideas so hey a little bit early but uh, there you go you know not too bad at all and, and again you said 25 to 37 dollars not too expensive so and of course we're going to stick with interbike for a little bit and here we have a way of getting your bike out of the way because I know that, uh, you know, my, my storage solution when I was growing up, uh, my parents put a hook in the shed for our bike. So we would have to pick up our bike, which wasn't the latest bike in the world, and try to hook it on a hook. And it was just hanging in the middle of the shed. Not the most effective way, but hey, it got it up out of, you know, out of the way off the ground. So it seems that it's gotten a little bit more high tech nowadays to get your bike out of the way so what is this 
Yes. This, uh, this company is called uh, Cycloc, uh, C-Y-C-L-O-C, no K. And he's devised a, a bunch of different ways to hang your bike on the wall. But the, they are, the, the thing that holds your bike is very small, but it looks very artistic. Like one of them is a circle with uh, a, a, a kind of sloped loop through it that your bike hangs on. And what's clever about it is not only the, can you hang up your bike, but it's in such a way that you can still lock the bike mm -hmm. to the wall and, and this thing is, is obviously if you're hanging your bike on a wall, you should have molly bolts behind it. So there's a three point way to uh, hang this up and he's done three different ways. There's a way to hang it up by the pedals, <laughs> which was astounding. Uh, one pedal slides into this hook, and then there are two little uh, hooks that hold the tires. And uh, on their website, uh, I think it's cyclock.com. Let me just take a yeah. look here because, okay, good. You're, you're on the Yeah, right yeah um, I'm, I'm looking at all three, the, the solo, the endo, and the hero. Yes, exactly. And then, we'll, and then one of them, uh, the bike can go straight up and down. And there are pictures in there of people having them in offices and you could you could use it as a decoration because they 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 hang in such a way that they look attractive definitely and, and they've made it so it doesn't scratch the wall or your bike and uh i i, th I thought that was great that yeah was really the the, the solo which is again the one with the curve uh hook kind of coming out and you just kind of slide your bike in and obviously like if it was just one it would kind of tilt one way or the other but because there are you know, two padded sections, it kind of uses its own force against it and kind of holds it in place just like that. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Very, very, very stylish, you know, and, and don't want to undersell that. Uh, not the cheapest solution. Obviously, you know, my parents' solution was like a $3 hook in the shed. Uh, these things are going between, well, and, and again, this is just... Uh, yeah, and, yeah, anywhere from uh, 69 to $99. Right. But like you said, very, very stylish. It would not look out of, out of place in, you know, any garage. No, absolutely right so and uh this is actually uh, a bike that we talked about with our friend gary k uh last time he was on the show but uh this is a new bicycle that i guess you know and and again uh, sorry for you know sounding like oh these youngsters but um as you get older and bikes one of the big problems with, with a lot of bikes out there is that you kind of have to throw your leg over, you know, kind of the center rail that kind of holds the bike together. It's not the easiest thing to do. It, you know, it, it's, it may hurt sometimes or it may just be difficult. And this company called uh, Brompton actually came up with a way to kind of combat that and make a foldable, which is kind of like a trade-off. So again, everyone, please go out and check out the photo of this thing because you got to see to believe it. But tell us about this really cool looking bike yeah well you know we'll we'll, I'll, we'll do it quickly since you you covered this already but what amazed me about this is the woman had it folded up at the uh at the stand this was at one of the they had a pre-show show that's kind of like their version of a pepcom mm -hmm. and and i said you know can you unfold that and show me what it looks like unfolded or is it too much trouble she said can you give me 12 seconds <laughs> <laughs> and i said what I'm a busy man. I don't think I can. And she just went, whoop. she, she raised a seat. She uh, raised the handlebar and then the bike just unfolded and, and snapped open. And I was thinking, this is unbelievable. I bet. Yeah. It, it and, and, and again, you know, foldable bikes there, uh, like you always had to kind of give up uh, some of the stability of the frame. How, how stable was the frame in your opinion? Was you, you know what? It, it seemed very stable. I actually didn't ride on it, but I, I just know from reading reviews. Now, the, 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 uh, these things are all wildly expensive there. I think they start at like 2200 or 1800 but then you can run it up to, uh, you know, what kind of gear ratio do you want? Do you want a titanium frame? What kind of handlebars do you want? So it's like a custom-made bike. They're all made uh, overseas uh but they get great reviews they're not on amazon you know they have their own distribution center but uh probably the same reason that 
uh, you already talked about it, is that they have a great reputation. And also be aware, if you're looking for bikes, there are folding bikes, which this one is, mm -hmm. not to be confused with portable bikes. Because after I saw this bike, I said to another gentleman who had a full-size bike, I said, can this fit in that bag? And he said, oh, yeah, let me show you. Well, he took the wheels off, and then he took the handlebar off, and then he <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, my <laughs> I And then that's when it dawned on me. I'm thinking, oh, I get it. Some bikes, like the Brompton, is a bike that just unfolds, Right. And then falls again. And some bikes, when you get to your destination, you literally take them apart. I, I mean, I, I think it took maybe eight or nine minutes for this guy to get that in the bag. But that's a heck of a lot different than feel, 12 seconds. Did you feel compelled after you asked him that, you know, th does this bike fit in that bag? Did you feel compelled to sit there for 10 minutes and watch him put it all in the bag? Well, you know what I said? I said, you know, I get the picture. I can see now. <laughs> I can see now. Also, I wanted to, you know, th those those uh, pre-show things are only three hours long and you right. want to, you know, move on. But I learned a lesson that folding and portable are two very different things. Definitely, definitely. And, and, and foldable is, uh, you know, obviously 12 seconds to 10 minutes. Uh, one seems a lot more practical, but of course, you always get those trade-offs. Um, although Brompton, I have heard good things and we talked about them uh, again uh, last time Garrett K was on. And he seemed to really, really enjoy, you know, really, really enjoyed them. Um, and, you know, uh, just kind of, you know, just kind of looking through some of your other stories, he was really impressed with some of the electric bikes out there. Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, I didn't cover any electric bikes. Right. I was mainly looking for uh, accessories, but right. uh, that just, that demo just stuck with me. Yeah, definitely. But now moving on to this next one, and it's a helmet that looks like, yeah, you know, if a stormtrooper had to ride a bike and he didn't have a stormtrooper helmet, yeah, you know, it could be as, as a stand-in. So what is this bike? Why, or what is this bike helmet? And why is it so smart? Uh, okay. First of all, it has a HD camera built into it. Not bad. And it has Wi-Fi streaming. So you can actually, if someone's uh, riding along with you, uh, you don't actually don't want them looking at their phone too much. They'll certainly have a, a phone holder on their dashboard, but you can stream video. Of, if four people have these helmets, they can talk to one another via Bluetooth. Hmm. And you don't have to wear headphones because there are down firing speakers built into the helmet. So you can hear each other talk, also noise reduction uh, headphones. You can hear each other talk through the helmets without covering your ears. And since it's Bluetooth and there's a mic built into the helmet, you can also take phone calls uh, as you're on the way. And there's also built in radio. You can, one person can be playing music and everybody else can be streaming the same music through their helmet if they want. You can shoot at uh, 1440p at 30 frames a second for up to two hours um, with the camera that's built in. It, it, it does a lot. So it's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and the HD camera. Right. And the communication thing. Much better than I thought because, I, you know, and this seems to be a trend and I hope that it, you know, kind of fizzles out really soon because... Um, a lot of companies out there are claiming, you know, uh, our security cam, our webcam, or this or that shoots, you know, HD, and it's always 720p. And I'm like, nothing against 720p, but I don't think that's what people really expect anymore. Like 1080p minimum, and then you go from there. But this one, like you said, 1440p to 1080p, so it, like really very, very good, uh, you know, high definition. Um, do you think they were kind of targeting, uh, you know, just kind of groups of bikers or like you know what uh, my my guess is that they are uh especially with the communication thing among among four bikers and i was on their website because at the show they said we haven't announced any price yet and when i checked their website the, the price was still not announced this is a a spring 2017 uh release and but i i noticed that their helmets are very high-end helmets and their motorcycle helmets especially are you know full face 
but again with uh, cameras built in and communication. So I think it's for the diehard bikers who actually want to document their rides. Okay. Which is why they wanted uh, an extremely uh, uh, high def camera built in. Yeah, and, and it makes complete sense. And definitely going there and looking at the uh, you know looking at the picture of this thing, I mean, looks very very well built, very very stylish. So. I can definitely say that it you know it even comes with like a uh, a Bluetooth handlebar remote control kind of deal. Ex- yes, exactly, exactly. Very, very cool. And uh, again, that was uh, from Sena S E N A S E N A at S E A S E N A dot com. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so moving from that one, and yeah, again, another bike accessory. We're gonna see a trend here, but um, yes, this is the this is the simplest. <laughs> Of the bike accessories. I'll go into some really elaborate lighting things. Uh, this is from Fabric, and it's a little uh, 30 lumen uh, rear light for your bike. So it it clips onto the back of the uh, seat post, mm-hmm. and uh, in blinking, it can run for six hours on a charge. It's USB charge. On full power, if you want it to be solid red, it's three and a half hours. And what's nice about it is it has a little built-in accelerometer. So if it's running along and it's blinking red and you suddenly stop, it'll go from blinking red to solid red so that the bikes or cars behind you see that you stopped. If it's, if you have it on plain red, steady red, as you're riding along and you hit the brake, it'll go bright red so that again, the person behind Very you sees, yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly, sees the difference. And that's, uh, I believe it's in the marketplace now, and that's under 40 bucks. So that's called Fabric, and it's the uh, uh, F30 for 30 lumens. It, 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 it really makes you wonder just how, uh, sorry about that, uh, really makes you just wonder how, um, uh, how, how complicated are these things to really put in? Because it seems like such a basic feature, but it would improve so many bikers' lives that cars behind them, just like you know, car other cars on the road, would know when they're slowing down or even be, or even stopped. I like I kind of wish this was like built in standard with a lot of bikes, and not like this little add on. But I'm glad that they made the add on. Yes, me too. Me too. And an an add on that I wish every bike came with would be a warning signal. Uh, here in Riverside Park, boy, a bike, a biker can zoom by you. You can feel the wind. I mean, they were so close. And I think, gosh, if I had t- taken two steps to my left, I would have been creened by this bike. Don't yeah. they, you know, at least ring something so I can turn around and see you're coming. Mm-hmm. So anyway. That was like the old days, but nowadays, I mean, you know, and again, I don't know what the feeling at Interbike was, but I know that a lot of bikers out there, you know, friends and people I've met, they, um, you know, like either they're on the sidewalk or like if you like after you get off the sidewalk, because sidewalk is so pedestrian, like they kind of want to be treated like another car on the road. Like they, you know, they ride on the road, they go 30, 35 miles an hour, no problem. Uh, they turn, turn signals. Like they are essentially like like little cars on the road. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about people in in the park on the pedestrian walkway, almost not. Yeah, that's something a little bit different. That's yeah, that oops. that's that that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So 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 yeah, that was a fabric uh, fabric rear lights. Right. Uh, and again, fabric.cc. Now, and so this company is called Orp O R P. And this is their smart horn. Actually, it's their smart light horn. And this is very clever. So it mounts onto the handlebar and there's a little lever in the back. So if you push the lever up, it gives a what they call their friendly sound, which is 76 decibels. And it also blinks like a strobe light so that that's the friendly sound now if there someone's in your way and you really want them to move out of the way you push down on this little tab and that gives a 96 uh decibel loud sound and again the strobe light flashes along with it now that is uh, also USB charged, and I think the guy said it can run a couple weeks on on a full charge. Not bad. And then they have a little built-in, not built-in, a, a built into the uh, the uh, uh, 
uh, op device is a jack where you plug in the remote the optional remote control so right. if you want to if you want to have your hands on the handlebars all the time you then have a button where if you press part way down you get the light sound if you push down hard you get the heavy sound um, and it's very clever very very clever and, and yeah you know because with ever with everything else it's just one tone one bell ring one honk one standard so very cool that they had a loud and a not so loud so yep. all right and the music means we have to take a break so dick if you don't mind sticking around for just yep. a little bit everyone else we'll be right back with more computer america right after this looking for a best friend brother wolf animal rescue has your best friend waiting just for you the mission of Brother Wolf Animal Rescue is to help build a sustainable, no-kill community where no dogs or cats are ever killed for population control, where true euthanasia is reserved only for animals who are irremediably suffering or for animals who are truly a threat to society and with no hope of rehabilitation. Brother Wolf staff and volunteers go door-to-door, -door, neighborhood by neighborhood, to educate citizens about local resources available for at-risk pets and to help their families connect with those resources. Brother Wolf's community-based approach to no kill helps keep family pets healthy happy and in their homes and out of the local shelter system in the first place for more information or to make a tax deductible donation to this wonderful 501c3 organization visit their website at www.bwar.org help to realize brother wolf's vision when no animal is euthanized for lack of a home who's a good boy Hi, this is Craig Crossman, host of the Computer America Show. You have important meetings to schedule, your company's getting ready for its IPO, and you're in charge of the PTA fundraiser this month. So how do you coordinate everyone to be available at the same time? Are you still using emails, phone calls, even text messages to schedule meetings with a group of people? How's that working out for you? Not so great, huh? It's a fact that every day, millions of people suffer from scheduling headaches. Well, with Doodle, scheduling meetings with a group of people is quick and easy. With Doodle, you can easily propose available times to each member. Each one checks off the times that they are available, and then you simply pick the time that works best for the group, all in an easy-to-read display that integrates with your existing calendar. Nothing could be more simple. Give Doodle a try for free, and like millions of Doodle users, you'll truly see how easy it is to find the perfect date and time for all your meetings. That's www.doodle.com. No, I don't know why a UPS doesn't have a backup light. Hi, I'm Marty Winston with a news tips bulletin review for Computer America, this time Onyx Beacons. You don't need a pair to use the Bluetooth beacon service, so nearby transmitters can trigger events and handset apps from product promos to directions across a campus or a building to where you're going. Onyx Beacons make some delightful transmitters. They can be Apple side iBeacon or Android side Eddystone units, and they have online tools for running campaigns with it. Their smaller Beacon One, midway between the size of a checker and a York peppermint patty, runs for months on a coin cell. The larger Enterprise Beacon, about as big as a DVD 10-pack, uses two or four AA cells or USB power. Their hand setup had no problem seeing and identifying all six of the units they sent us. Bottom line, we have plans for deploying Onyx Beacons in our project house, and we couldn't be happier with how they work. Marty Winston, News Tips Bulletin for Computer America. Hello and welcome back to the Computer America Show. It is 33 minutes past the hour as we continue on here. And yeah, you know, we have Dick DiBartolo here for the entire hour doing all these different great gadgets. And uh, and I just want to say real quick that everyone, uh, I did see the Microsoft Surface Studio that Microsoft just announced. Uh, we will probably be talk. We will probably be talking about that uh, on Friday, and it's uh, looks very very impressive. Can't wait to talk about it. But um, yeah, you know, it's uh, definitely go check that out. It's a crazy crazy device. But like I said, whole hour Dick DiBartolo, and we continue on. And yeah, and again, just want to make this perfectly clear that if you head on over to gizwiz.biz and go over to the non-paid computer, uh, computer America, uh, lackey, non-paid lackey font on Computer America, there we go. Uh, Dick has uh, you know links to all the websites to where you can purchase them. He has uh, he does a great job with all these different videos that he shoots, actually demonstrating these products whenever he can. Uh, very, very you know a lot of great effort went into this. 
And with that being said, we just finished up with the combination safety light, uh, safety light slash horn from. Or- right. I'm going to add one thing to that because during yeah. the break, I went over to their website. They were offering a free remote control, which was fifteen dollars. And I noticed on their website, as of today, they still are. So the the light horn is sixty five dollars. And if you order it, I don't know when the offer is going to end, but it'll it'll automatically come with a remote for your handle so you can operate this light and horn uh, remotely. Right. And, and again, don't get me wrong. I know nothing about this company, but it seems like one of those offers that like, you know, uh, as seen on TV offers, it's like for a limited time call and get, you know, a second set free. It's like, you know, for a limited time, but I've seen the commercial now for seven years. And <laughs> still going on. Maybe it's going to be one of those things, but as of right now, it's still going on. So definitely yes. if that is interesting, go check that out. Now this next one, and you know, I've seen old cartoons where they have the seal and they have the line of horns, and they you know do the little thing where the seal honks the horns. It, this looks like one of those setup, but um, instead, it's uh, multicolored and for your bike. So yeah, exactly, and, and it's a twelve-year-old kid. He started at nine years old. His father designed a. Uh, uh, something called horn tones for cars uh-huh. and he said well i want something for my bike and he started designing it and by the time they got through prototypes and and uh picking it up and and deciding what to do he was three years in the making but they introduced it at into bike and let me say i, I picked up one of my every color has a different Oh, it even plays a little tone. It play, yes, each one plays a different. My favorite one, uh, and I don't know where I put it, is Road Runner, but this one's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an easy way to, to, to someone will actually chuckle and then get out of your way when uh, you sound one of these uh, fun horns. Uh, I, they're called I, bike tones. In yeah, there. I, I'm guessing the, the Road Runner is, of course, the, the Meep Meep. Yes, exactly. Beep, beep. Yeah, exactly. That's my favorite. Yeah, exactly. So no, no. I I thought that you like put like an array of these things and like it was gonna like play like each one played like one like one tone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a symphony. But no, okay. That that makes more sense. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, your handlebars get kind of cluttered, but no, it was just a demonstration of all the different colors. So very very cool. And yeah, you know, check out all the bike tones there. Uh, you said. Uh, $20? 20 dollars. Twenty bucks under yeah, nineteen ninety five. Not bad, not bad at all. And again, uh, a dad and a son developing a cool product. Uh, very, very nice. So, with that being said, we've you know at you know towards the beginning of this page, we talked about the fabric rear light, which is again thirty lumens, and it had it was kind of like a brake light for for bikes. Um, this is kind of similar in that it adds lights to your bike, but more so your helmet. And so what is this new, uh, what is this helmet? I mean, what's yeah, the- this, this is called the Loma, the, the Lumos, L-U-M-O-S, lighted helmet. And there are uh, LEDs in the front, uh, white LEDs in the front, red LEDs in the back. Again, the LEDs will uh, light up bright red when you stop. But again, it comes with a little remote control for the built-in signal lights. Hmm. So if you're turning right, then what was red now turns amber and just flashes in on the one side to show which side you're turning. Sure. Uh, it's very clever. And uh, I actually demoed this and the next thing we're gonna talk about on, on uh, ABC uh, World News now. So if, also if you go to my website and click on ABC News, you can see the video it ran yesterday. Uh, people like this a lot. Now, it's it's a very good looking helmet. It's $149, so it's certainly more than a regular helmet. But what I liked about this is that now your signal lights or, or, or the lights that you're there are a- any driver can see. You know, yeah. you, you, can, you can have lights on your bike, but if someone's in an SUV or something, they might be too high if they're right behind you to see your lights right with with the helmet uh this really lets people know that you're there if you're going to turn what turn what which way you're turning and if you're stopping that you are stopping so i think that's worth the money yeah and and i mean you know there's something to be said for I, i know that when i drive i kind of you know not just look at the car in front of me but you know kind of look through the back and then the front windshield 
at, at the car in front of them. And like, so I, I know if they break, then they break, then they break. Uh, you know, I'm sure with something like this helmet, you'd be able to, like the cars, a couple cars back will be able to see you breaking as well. Um, the, the three hour, uh, the three hour lifespan, I, I mean, were they hoping to get that up in a later model? Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm looking at that. Uh, well, well, it's three hours if you want the lights on steady. Right. But it's six hours if you want them blinking. Okay. So that, that would certainly get you through a day of biking, and then you could charge it at night. Right. Yeah. I, I would think that something like this would appeal to, of course, commuters, you know, who kind exactly. of ride their bike maybe early in the morning or late at night. Exactly. So. Exactly. And just take it up to the office with you uh, right. and charge it again. So this is a Kickstarter project, which is just ending now. So it's $149 for people who get in. I don't know when it's going to, when the Kickstarter thing ends and then 179, they hope it retail, but right now everything is 149. Yeah. I'm uh Oh, Hey, check that. They even got Bill Nye to do the, uh, the promo video. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's a very worthwhile thing that he would like endorsing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah. And yeah, definitely check that out again. Lumos helmets. Uh, and, and you mentioned that you also dem uh, demonstrated this other one and it comes, well, I was about to say, I know the, the, uh, the company Kryptonite, but um, obviously it's the product name and Kryptonite is used everywhere. Thank you, Superman. But uh, New York Lock, what, what, what's the, this? About this the, like? the New York Lock is very funny. They, they call it the New York Forget About It Lock. <laughs> okay. So it, it is one heck of a piece of steel and, and the, the, uh, the U-bolt locks on both sides so instead of it just snapping off on one side and then turning around the whole u-bolt comes off so it locks it on both sides um it weighs like four and a half pounds it's going to be pretty hard to cut through this thing it also everything every part of it is covered in vinyl to protect your bike and whatever you're locking up to there's a sliding cover that covers the entranceway to where the key goes so that rain and road dust and stuff won't get up into uh, where you unlock it. Mm -hmm. And then it comes with three stainless steel keys, but the master key, two things about it that I like is it can unlock lock the lock in either direction. So you don't have to fuss around and, oh, I have to turn the key one 180 and put it in that way. It Ooh. goes... We call those the we call those the three time uh, locks because you know just like a USB port, you try one way it doesn't work, oh. the other way it doesn't work. Try it the yeah. third time, okay, it works. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So it's not a three time lock; it's a one time lock. Yeah. And also, the master key has a built in LED, so that if you're unlocking this very late at night, you'll have no problem uh, uh, doing that. Definitely. And again, just kind of looking at it, I mean, I, I like in my head, I'm picturing trying to get bolt cutters and like going at this thing. And it's like, you're going to break your bolt cutters if you try to get at this thing. Yeah, this is big. And this is their small one. This is the mini. <laughs> this is this is called the forget about it mini. And they have a bigger one with a chain so that if you want to, you know, you have to tie up to a tree or something and you need a long chain. Um that there's the Mac. They don't call it the Maxi. They just call it the Mini. The Mini. Right. And the other one, I guess, is the regular. But they're at uh, Kryptonite.com. Right. And of course, uh, it sounds like that the Max that you were just talking about, it can double as a boat tether, uh, <laughs> in, in 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 extreme cases. But no, yeah. this is very very cool. And uh, you know, good to hear that you reviewed that one. Now this this next one, uh, we we talked about again with Gary K. He covered the same event, so I, I don't know if you two met about there. Oh, we did. We had lunch together. Yeah, uh, we, uh, we had breakfast together both days because uh, it's free breakfast in the press <laughs> room. So why not? Exactly. But he but he could not stop talking about this next one, and it's uh, it's biking uh, paraphernalia, but it's a like honestly, if every biker had one of these, I don't think anyone would get hit ever again. I mean, these things are so it, high tech. It, it's very clever and. When I saw the prototype of this, I think it was at CES 2014. So it was about two years ago. And the guy said, well, it's not in the marketplace yet. It's probably going to be about 180 bucks or something. Anyway, it's in the marketplace now. It's called the commuter jacket. And what's nice about this, it's a waterproof, breathable fabric. But when you raise your arm, 
uh, LEDs light on both sides of your sleeve, blinking amber LEDs light to show you what direction you're going. So obviously during the day when you raise your arm, person will see which way you're pointing, mm -hmm. but you'll really get someone's attention at night because uh, when you hold your arm up, the lights blink, you put your arm down, it's about five to six seconds and the lights automatically go off. At the back, there are red blinking lights just on the jacket so someone can see this even if it's a uh, dark out that some something red with LEDs is riding in front of me. And uh, it, it's very clever. And the, the best thing is it's $83. Uh, it's called the commuter jacket and it's both on the company website for uh, $83 and it's on Amazon for $83. Yeah. The, the, the only thing I can think of that, you know, would kind of, where he was kind of spitball or, you know, uh, spitballing that it'd be, you know, $180 and it came in at almost a hundred dollars under what he said it was going to be. I can only, you know, kind of attribute that to LEDs and how cheap they are nowadays. I mean, you find and, them Yeah. And probably, uh the interest in it probably said you know what we're not going to make 10 of these we're going to make ten thousand of these there you go yeah and so definitely check that out um and it's v-i-s-i-j-a-x uh, -I -I visit jack right. right and it comes in in uh that that kind of aren't that kind of yellow construction worker guy thing or it comes in black so right no choice Definitely. So either uh, e either survival yellow or stylish black. So right, take exactly. your pick. Um, all right. So this next one, and this one is it's actually a, a website that we may not have known about. And so what is this website and why? Yeah, is th th this, this is very interesting. The website is called Touch of Modern. And uh, I saw them at a Pepcom event and they had this robot who... I, I, I believe as you moved your phone, the robot followed the motions that you made with your phone, moving it to the right, the robot would sidestep to the right and move it to the left. But what was interesting about it is I thought this was going to be a website where things were just outrageously priced, but it turns out that it's a website that gets very techy things but for a very short time, uh, she told me they normally t uh, have items and keep them for just five days. Really? But they, they actually discount them because I, I said, I said, that, that, that robot is great. What does that cost? And she said, uh, I, I believe it's two ninety nine. Well, by the time I wrote this piece up and we used it on the show, it was, 10 days later <laughs> and it was nowhere on their website but i found it on amazon and on amazon it was 399 so it looks like they were selling it for a hundred dollars less and i went on their website and looked up some things and then looked them up on amazon and indeed most of the time they were selling them for less but it's the kind of thing you have to check out often and if you see something, you pretty much have to decide whether you want it then or the next day, because when you go back, it won't be there. And, and, and I did call the company after the show and, and I said, you know, did I understand this right? That I said, because the, the robot I saw is nowhere to be seen. And she said, the only time that changes is during November and December, because we tend to keep items that people like in stock for the whole uh, Christmas season or the whole holiday season mm -hmm. um, so that people can shop, talk to one another. Oh, should we get that for Harvey? Should we get that and go back and the item will still be there. So, and she said, that's pretty much the only time we ever go to shows is to talk about the holiday season because that's the season most when you can go back to our website and uh, find something that you liked earlier and that it's still there. But um, it, 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 it's a fun thing to visit. You do have to, you do have to sign in. You have to give a, um, an email address to sign in, which I did. And then I got, um, I got some sort of a coupon back. I forgot what the coupon was. Um, and they send me something every day, uh, which is fun because they find, they find very unusual stuff. 
yeah, I, I, it sounds sort of, but not some. I, I mean, there's another service out there. Well, actually, it blossomed into its own little thing where you kind of sign up for a service and they send you a box of t shirts and keychains 